Come on, let's stand up on our feet. Put those hands together. How many of you are ready for your midweek miracle? Come on, did you come expecting tonight? Hallelujah.
just, you can't. You can't go wrong when you say what God says. How are you going to go wrong if you're saying what God says? Because he's never wrong. So you'll never, if you're saying what God says about a situation, you're never wrong. Amen. That's hard for some people to take. But that's the truth. If you're saying what God says about a situation, you're never wrong. Symptoms may be wrong. Reports may be wrong. The neighbor may be wrong. People in your family may be wrong. But God is never wrong. Never. That's how, that's how you can be bold about living for God is you know he's never wrong and if I just do what he says, say what he says, I'm not going to be wrong about this. Amen. That's why I have no trouble being bold about the things of God because I'm like, it's in the book. Well, now there's no well to it. It's not up for discussion now. God settled it. Get in line. That's it. Get in line with what God says. Because the longer you sit and argue about what, and besides that, how are you going to prove God wrong? People want to sit and argue about, well, I think it means this, and I think it means that, and you know, I'm from this background, and I think it means that. Well, how about just owning up to the fact you could be wrong altogether? Let's see what God really said, and then go with that plan. I, I'm telling you, it's going to help you if you just do it. Just follow God. Build your life on that and follow Him. Just follow Him. Just go for it. Amen. Is Chris, are you in here somewhere? Tell them what the Lord was giving you there. The Lord was telling me a while ago that He said the enemy has tried to distinguish to extinguish your light. But even though your light is dim, it's still the light. And as long as you stay turning toward God, that light will just become more and more bright all the time. And God will give you back what's been taken away. He's put courage and boldness down inside of you. He has a plan and a purpose for you to go in most places, to go to places that most Christians that say they love me won't go. Your purpose is within your grasp. If you'll just stay tight with me, let me guide you, let me lead you, I will raise you up. I've put you in the lighthouse so that you can become the lighthouse. That is my plan and my purpose. Take no words from anyone that does not line up with me and what I have for you. Take no guidance from anyone that does not encourage you in me. I have said it so that no weapon formed against you will prosper. If you'll just believe in me and you'll stay turning to me, I will guide you and you will find that peace, that purpose, and that plan that I have for you. Praise the Lord. Man, that's a load. Now, 
the ones of you in here that that was specifically for, I mean, that's a, that's a kind of anybody can take it word, but it's also a very specific word. Here's the thing about God speaking through people, and then when you hear something and you think, you know, like in your heart, you're like, man, that was for me. Well, it wasn't for you to just go out of here and, you know, not do what God's saying do. Like, the God of heaven has given you instruction for success. To not take it would be stupid. Plain and simple. Well, I mean, why, why, would you, why would you go against what the God of heaven said to do? How much sense does that make? I'll help you. Zero. It makes no sense to go against what God says leads to success and then think you're going to make it. It's ignorance gone to seed. No sense. None. So whoever, like, when he was saying that, you're like, ooh, I think that might be me. Yeah, I guarantee it. If you thought that, I can guarantee you it was you. So now do something with it. Amen. I, I challenge you to obey God and see what happens. Because I already know what will happen. Your whole life will change. Everything about your life will change. Everything about your family will change. Everything about everything you do in life will change. And it will all change for the better. To go with God. Amen. Amen. Come on, would you bow your heads for just a minute? You start following God by giving your life to Him. Jesus walked by people and Jesus would say, Hey, come follow me. Some did and some didn't. And it's that way now. No, it hasn't changed. Jesus went to the cross and died. Jesus was resurrected on the third day. Jesus is alive now. And by the power of His Holy Spirit, He says, Hey, come follow me. Hey, come follow me. Some do and some don't. Those that don't, don't go to heaven. Listen to me. If you're listening to preachers online or on TV that water it down to where they tell you you can do whatever you want and heaven's going to be your home, you need to turn them off and never watch them again. You need to understand there is a separation if you don't live for God you don't go spend eternity with him it don't happen well I don't know if I believe that try it then put your belief to the test die without him and see what happens So are you trying to scare me? No, I'm just trying to give people the reality of what's going on here. When you die without Jesus, you go straight into an eternal hell. It, you're totally cut off from the grace of God. From Like right now, the worst sinner that you could think of. See, we categorize it, but really the biggest sin is you just deny Jesus. But let's just say the worst, the worst of the worst, they still have a chance as long as they're breathing. But the instant, the instant that breath leaves their body and they, they die, their existence in this life is over, there are, there are no more chances. None. That's why 
this church and the people in this church are so aggressive about people giving their heart to God because we understand it's a life or death matter every time we get a shot at somebody. Every time we get a chance to do this, it's a life or death matter for people. And we know that because it was a life or death matter for all of us. So I don't know everybody's heart in here. I don't know everybody in here that's born again. And I don't know everybody in here that's not born again. But God knows and so do you. You know if you're ready for heaven. You know if you died right now you'd go to heaven. And you also know if you wouldn't. Because I'm going to tell you the Holy Spirit's no fool. And he's not going to leave you thinking you're going to be okay. No, he'll tell you. And then some of you are just backslidden, just away from God. You look cute, you say all the right stuff, but you don't serve him. Folks, I'm going to tell you, read your New Testament. You better read your New Testament and figure out that you need to be serving God. Amen. So if you're watching online, you say, hey, dude, I need to give my heart to God. Good. You should. Smartest thing you'll ever do. This is the smartest decision any human could ever make is giving their life to God. Totally committed, totally going for it with God. If you're in the room, you say, I'm doing it. I'm giving my heart to God tonight. Or you're coming back to God. You're just backslidden and you're coming home. Like you're in the pig pen and you're going to go to the Father's house. That's you. I want to see your hand in the air. I'm talking like bold and brave. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? Thank you. Now who else? Now, if you're watching online, you can put up a hand emoji and say, I did it. I'm going to lead the three of you in a prayer. And though, if you're online, I'm leading you in the same prayer. Listen to me. I'm giving you the words. You're going to give those words a meaning. You, listen to me. You're repenting of sin, meaning you're turning away from sin and you're turning toward God. It's not some little cute church saying. It's repenting of sin and leaving that lifestyle and going to God. Right out loud. Say, Father God, I repent of all sin. I turn from that old way. I turn to you. I give my life to you. Thank you that Jesus Christ died for me. That he was raised from the dead for me. And that by a miracle, I'm born again in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, church. Come on! Praise the Lord. Now do it. Do it. Live for God. Listen to me. You don't have to raise your hand 733 times. You, I'm, I'm telling you, this ought to be the last time. This ought to be the last time you pray that prayer because now you're going to live for God. Nobody's dragging you off this path. No temptations dragging. Well, you know, I'm just tempted. Oh, shut up. Jesus defeated that too. So now you got the, now you got the victorious one living on the inside of you. Don't give me that garbage. Don't even. 
Man, why would you know you're a preacher? I've been there, so don't give me that garbage because that's all it is. And I promise you, you will not be able to stay around me and you will not be able to stay around the people in this building with that kind of crap coming out of your mouth. Why? Number one, we won't put up with it because we know it's not true. Because we know the God we serve and we know the Jesus that died for us. And we won't tolerate it. So get it together. Live for God. Amen. I'm trying to be nice, but I'm being nice to you, but I, I'm not ever going to be nice to the devil. He's tra- Listen, he is a worthless, sorry, wimpy, wicked, defeated little twerp. And I ain't giving him a break. I'm not giving him a break. I'm going to make him pay every day for what he does to people. I can't stand what he does to people. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give God a hand clap because three people, three people that we know of has dodged hell. And that's a pretty big deal as far as I'm concerned. Amen. You know, I'm just like Pastor Chris. If you'll just stick it out. And we do know because we have been there. There are days when we literally had to dig our heels in and say we refuse to quit. There have been days when we've had to get a hold of a a life partner and say we need help because we're struggling. And I'm telling you, the day that you let your pride get so big that you won't reach out for somebody for help is the day that the devil's going to snatch you and take you straight to hell. You have to be able to ask people for help. God has put people in your path. If you're standing within the sound of my voice, God has put people in your path to help you. You're not here by accident. You're not here by coincidence. God put you in this place for a reason because there are people here that can help you thrive in life. And to take that for granted is just foolishness. It's absolutely foolishness to just take that for granted. God has put men and women in your path that want to be your your helper. They want to be your accountability partner. They want to help you get through life. They don't want to see, see you fail. I've heard people's hearts in this room how they have friends who are struggling. And the sad part is, sometimes they want it more for that person than that person wants it for themselves. But I'm telling you, if you'll just hang on to the lifeline, whoever God's put in your path to help you, and if you will let them help you. You know, if... If you come upon a drowning victim, the first thing they want to do is panic and slap you away. But if you'll just relax and do what they tell you to do and trust them to take you on board, you'll survive. You'll survive. And not only will you survive, you'll thrive. Amen? We have to help each other. Amen? That's why we're here. Listen, if you just gave your heart to God or you rededicated your life to Christ, we want to make sure that you do that. This is going to be the first thing that we do to help you. And if you'll text the word DECISION to 270-279-1600, we're going to make sure that you know every time the doors are open, we're going to be reminding you, hey, this is where you need to be. Hey, we've got some tools to help you. We're excited about it. We're going to remind you all the time about the decision that you made. Because you might be just in that moment of going back to the crack house or just in that moment of getting 
that alcohol are knocking on that door of that person you're not supposed to be with when all of a sudden you get the text on your phone and God says, excuse me, there's somewhere you need to be and it's not here, right? We want to help you. We don't just we don't just throw this number out there for no reason. We want to help you. Amen. And if you're here for the first time or maybe it's just your first few times, text the word welcome to that same number and we're going to make sure that you know what's going on here at Life in Christ so that you don't miss anything. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Ladies, can I hear you in the house? weekend it is two days away two days that's it do not miss this conference this weekend do not be late for this conference guys I hope you have a plan to help take care of those kids I hope you have a plan to have dinner ready for them I'm, I'm telling you here here's the thing you don't you don't have to do it just like she does it. Okay? Just don't let them die. That's that's what I tell that's what I tell Chris. I'm like, I don't you don't, you don't have to do it just like I do it. Just I don't just want her alive when I get home. Right? Take care of those kiddos, have a good time with them, and then have those kids. Uh, bathed and in bed Friday night when she comes home and sit down and say let me hear all about what God's done in your life because I'm telling you she's going to have a lot to talk about even on Friday night and then she's going to need to be up the next morning and out the door to get back here at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning because she's got a day filled with great things God is just going to lavish her with his goodness and so you do not want your spouse to miss it amen Amen. So ladies, make sure you sign up. If you haven't signed up yet, make sure you get that done. Listen, uh, high five just a few people next to you and turn your attention to the screen. We've got some great announcements for you. Hey everyone, if you have recently made the decision to follow Christ, we just want to congratulate you. So what do you do now? Well, we would love to help you discover the next steps in your journey. Please take a moment and text the word DECISION to the number on the screen so that we can continue to stay in touch with you. We believe it's not about where you've been in life, only where you're going. So welcome. Our hope is that you truly come to know God, find freedom from your past, and discover your purpose so that you can go out and make a difference. As we enter the message portion of our service, we would like to ask you to extend the courtesy of quiet to those being ministered around you. We believe that you are here for a purpose and God has something he wants to say specifically to you. Our hope is that you leave here encouraged and closer to him than ever before. Now, let's get ready to enjoy and receive God's word. Praise Jesus. Ladies, there are no excuses for you not being here this week. And like two guys clapped on taking care of the kids, so y'all need to step it up. Huh? Oh, boy. I ain't getting in the middle of that. <laughs> I'm out of that. Um, I want to start tonight, we're really just going to kind of crack the door going into this tonight. Uh, I re After just coming out of the series we were in, I really want to talk about this subject We'll probably be in it a, a few weeks, I'm sure, because I want people to understand the authority that they have as a believer, and that that is something they can 
exercise all the time. This is not, this is not a uh, preacher thing. It is something that you've been given by the Word of God. And we are to walk in the same authority that Jesus had when he was on the earth. He delegated that authority to us, the body of Christ, when he ascended back into heaven. He delegated that authority and then he sent the Holy Spirit into the earth to be on the believer to empower them to get the job done in the earth. Now a lot of people want to argue about this. You can argue with yourself all you want because I'm not getting into it with you. Because the reality is this. Jesus said it and outside of that I pretty much don't care what anybody else thinks about it. So well, that's easy for you to say up there in that pulpit. No, I'll say it to your face. Like that far away from you. I don't care. I'm not into what everybody else's opinion is. If Jesus said that I was supposed to operate in that kind of authority, that's it for me. That's the end of it. So now i got to go to the Word and find out where my place is at. And this is a major disconnect with people. They get born again, and then they have no clue who they are in Christ. They don't even understand that they're in Christ. Half of them don't know that Christ is in them. Christ in us, the hope of glory. They don't know that they're supposed to be out spreading the, the good news to all the world. And then they don't know that they're supposed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to do that. I mean, if Jesus told everybody that was going to be in the upper room, don't go do anything until you're empowered. Well, that died with the last apostle preacher. No, that's cessationism, and it's not true. It's not true. If all that passed away with the last apostle, why are we here? Why aren't we here? Because if, if, if we're not, if we're not going to be able to have anything this word says or do anything this word says, I'm out. I'm done. I mean, come on. Why, I mean, we, I'm not up here to give a TED talk. You understand? As, as ministers of the gospel... I got one, two, three, four on the front row that I know of. Ministers of the gospel were to equip the saints for the working of the ministry. So equipping people means you got to have the kind of talks that we have. You know, which I know the military is a lot different now than it used to be. Now everybody's got safe spaces and they pet them and you see how that works. But for all of you that served in a military that was, you know, they meant it when you went in there. And the second you got off that bus, they're in your face and you don't know why. They started that for a reason. They're getting you out of thinking like a civilian. And they're starting the process of getting you to think like a warrior. And this, is, this has been a major disconnect in the church. People come into church and they want to be petted. Look, I love people. We spend our lives trying to reach people. If you're here for the first time or the first few times and you're here to be petted, you have sadly come to the wrong place. Now, if you came here to learn about Jesus, learn who you are in Christ, find out that you can go out into this world and make a difference, you're in the right place and we'll put some backbone in you. Amen. 
you, listen, it, it's great to get born again. That's wonderful. Everybody, every human should get born again. You need to get baptized after you get born again. You need to get baptized in the Holy Spirit after you get born again. Amen. I don't know if I believe all that. It doesn't matter if you know if you believe all that or not. That's the recipe that God laid out. So whether we know all about it or not doesn't matter. It's the recipe God laid out. So that's the end of the discussion. That's it. You're either going to follow God or rebel. Simple. It's simple. Well, I'm not going to do that. Rebellion. Rebellion. Well, I just, I don't think I believe all that. I'm not going to do it. Rebellion. It's rebellion. And the Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So be cautious in having it your way. You get born again, you're ready for heaven. Baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're empowered with gifts. You're clothed in power to tell the world about Jesus. And then some people have the mentality of thinking, well, you know, if God wants me to do it, he'll, he'll, just, he'll just do it. He'll just make it happen. No, you'll sit on the couch and you won't hit a lick at nothing. I want, I want all the ministers in the room to stand up. If every one of us go home with our Bibles, set our Bible on the counter, and have the mentality that if God wants to use me, then I guess he'll do something through me, then there's not a one of us standing right now that will ever get anything done for the kingdom. And all of you know this. I'm preaching to the choir now, but I'm trying to make an example for the saints we're equipping that we have to do something with what God's given us. You can't just be born again and do nothing. That's not God's plan. And when God called every one of us, we knew it was a clear call to preach the gospel. And so I'm telling you, until they throw me in a dirt hole somewhere, that's what I'll be doing. I don't, listen, there, there is no retirement from preaching the gospel in scripture. No, you preach it until he blows the horn or you go down. One of the two. Amen. That's for every one of you. Okay, you can sit down. Then. You've got to do something with what God gives you. And it's the same for the saints that are being equipped. You have to use what you've been given. To do something for God. Amen. So will, will it always be easy? No, probably not. No, you'll face all kinds of challenges. You'll go, you know, there's all these things that happen as a Christian. Because you still live in a fallen world. But here's the difference in you and the fallen world you have a risen Savior living on the inside of you. And so that's the difference maker. We have authority. We walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you this, you can change every room you walk in just by being there. Amen. Sue, so would you come up here? Before I just get way off into this, Sue and I were talking the other night, just really wasn't even about this message. It was just kind of a, just our life. And how, just how we got started and, and giving our heart to the Lord and knowing nothing. I mean, we knew nothing. Well, Sue knew way more about it than I did. I didn't know anything. And I was glad I wasn't going to hell. I was excited about that. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Pretty fired up about not being in the fire, you know what I mean? And uh, I was like, yes, no hell for me, praise the Lord. I mean, I'm like, I'm out of that. Well, but I didn't understand that there was more to that, to living, to being a Christian. And so 
you know, we were going to church and doing the deal and we started figuring out, you know, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this. If I'm going to live for God, then I'm going to live for God. There, there's not going to be, there's not going to be a church me and then an outside me. There's going to be a Christian me and that's it. And whoever don't like it can just get in line and not like it. It's not, it doesn't matter. And here was, here became my mentality. If God thought enough of humanity to send his son to the earth and die so that I could live, then I'm going to spend all of my days living for him. And so we just started making decisions, putting, we put boundaries in our life. We started making decisions on how we were going to raise our child. We didn't know it was just going to be one child and then ended up just one child. And so we made that decision, which was terrible, to only have one child. We lost a child, then we had a child, and we made a decision to not have any more. That was a dumb, selfish move. I'm just saying, how could you say that? Your wife's standing there. No, trust me, we've had that discussion, okay? So we've been married 30 years. Don't think there's a lot of discussions we ain't had. <laughs> Name one. We had it. You know? <laughs> right? But we started making decisions early on. This is, we're raising our kid in the way of the Lord. Period. That's it. We don't care who don't like it. This is what we're doing. This is our house. Right? You understand? And as for me and my house, and if you don't like it in my house, go find your own. We will serve the Lord. Serve the Lord meaning I don't just pack a Bible. Serve the Lord meaning my life is yours. Now command me where to go. We had a lot of hard conversations between us. We had a lot of hard conversations between the three of us. But we drew a line. Some of our family didn't like it. And we didn't move off of that line. A lot of Christian people didn't like it. And we did not move off of that line. We were called, you know, well, go ahead, so you tell them. Just how people thought we were radical and well, we had people I don't calling, know why. We had people calling us Jesus freaks and just said that um, it, we had people calling us Jesus freaks. We had people saying that um, we were just radical and that we were trying to take things away from our child. We were trying to take some of her best childhood away from her because we did not um, let her have a, a little boyfriend when she went to school and little things like that. And um, so we had to stand up to that. And, um, and like he said, we had set boundaries. We had set guidelines. And so many people just talked about us. I mean, they thought we were crazy, and they laughed at us. And we even had family members try to go against us. You know how good I slept. On that. And, um, but we had, to make, we had to make decisions, and we had set boundaries. And so it did cost us relationships. It cost us relationships with friends, it cost us relationships and family because we had set up boundaries, we had set up guidelines, and if they were going to cross those guidelines when they had our child with them, then our child wasn't going to be with them nope. any longer. And so, Not at all. And it wasn't up for discussion. You knew the boundary. You broke it. It's your fault, not mine. That's right. Yeah, because they would want to try to tell us that we were taking the child away from yeah. them. And we said, no, you knew the boundary, you crossed it, so you made the decision knowing what was going to happen. Yeah, and so we knew our lives were devoted to God, and so when Aaron was little, just in her, I don't know, what is it, bassinet, is that what they call them? In her little thing. Yes. 
I don't, I don't know what we're talking well, you about. Little I'm babies so sorry. when they're first born. Yeah, she was in her little bassinet. It was the same know. bassinet that I slept in when I was a baby. Sorry, girl, I don't know all the terms. <laughs> I just know we put her in a little thing when she was little. <laughs> but we would stand over that little thing. Yes, that bassinet. Her little bed. Her little bed. And we would stand over her and give God thanks for her. And then we would speak the word of God over her. Well, that's just a little much. Oh, okay. It's funny, how, it's funny how the Muslim culture doesn't think it's a little much. Right. They even do it. They speak the Quran over their kids. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, they're devoted. So we just started... We would stand over her bed and quote scripture over her bed. If any kind of, if anything tried to come against her, we're like, nope, that's illegal. That won't do. See, when you know where you are and you know whose you are. That's right. And you know when something comes against you that's illegal, you don't allow it to stay. That's why I don't tolerate sickness. I'm like, what, are you joking me? That's illegal. I don't live in the curse. That's right. I live in the blessing. So I don't live sick. I live healed. Yes. Some people are like, well, you know, what's just that? No, no. Stop making excuses. You're eating. Well, that's Sunday's, next Sunday's message. (laughs) You're on one side or, or the other. Well, I got this going on. But it shouldn't be going on. Take authority over it. Take authority over it. So then, so then we taught her that at an early age, and I know I know where you're wanting to go. And we with the story when she comes in. You want me to go there? Yeah, I do. So we understand when you're sitting here and you're like, but I've been taught something different for so long. Like I've had it ingrained in me and we're not saying they're bad people and i'm not saying yeah we're not saying you're bad but we get it we get it we totally understand that it's hard to get rid of that old mindset of well maybe the lord's just teaching me something or you know well maybe god will heal me well i hope that god will heal me we 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 understand that mindset but what we can stand here and say is aaron does not and we were taught i was actually talking about it to aj the other night and i was sharing it with chris and He's asked me to share with you tonight. But Erin was raised with us telling her, when you believe and you ask, you receive. There is no question about it. And so we taught her that from the time that we could teach her anything. That's right. And so there was one particular day that um, we had come in. I worked uh, for the school system, or I worked for uh, the Head Start system, and I'd pick Aaron up from school and we came home and it was just everyday common for me. I would go home and I put my stuff down and I started supper every, every day. And um, <laughs> it doesn't happen that way anymore. But, <laughs> um, but I, would, I would put my stuff down and I would start dinner and Aaron was in kindergarten and she wanted to go outside and play and I said, babe, my head is hurting so bad. Like, I can't. I can't go outside and watch you, and I'm not even going to cook dinner right now. I've just got to sit here for a little bit and get my see if my head will just stop hurting. And I told her she could go outside and play for just a little bit. She had to stay in a certain area so I could kind of see her. And um, so she did that, and she was outside for quite a little bit, and then she came back in, and she stood at the door, and she says, Mom, are you not going to cook supper? I'm hungry. And I said, honey, I know. And I'm just, it was one of those migraine headaches where, I mean, like, you thought you were going to, th- you know, throw up, light hurt, you, hurt your head. And I said, babe, I know, I know. And I'm going to get up here in a second. And she goes, well, can I pray for you? And I said, yes, you can pray for me. And it was a cool autumn day. And she walked over, and I can still feel it. Like, I just remember it so well. And she walked over, and she took her little hand, and she laid it on my head. And she commanded healing to come in my body, told the devil to take his hands off of her mommy. And she just said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Devil, you take your hands off my mom. Headache, you have to leave her right now. 
And when she pulled her hand away, I physically felt that pain just being stripped out of my head. And I was in such shock because I had been taught but other things. But she wasn't. Erin wasn't. And I stopped and I looked over at her and she goes, do you feel better? And I said, she, said, she was I, coming back for round two. She, she goes, do you feel better? And I said, I do. And she says, good, now go cook supper. <laughs> it's the truth. I mean, she just, we needed something done. Praise the Lord. And she just took that authority because she knew her place. She didn't have, she didn't have any infiltration of doubt. She had been taught when I lay my hands on something, That's right. and when I speak, it happens. And she's done that now for how I don't know how she is, and I'm sorry, but I, 25. She's done it for she's she's done it as long as she's been alive. She she lays her hand, and when she says something, there is no doubt. It's a gift that gift of faith just rises up in her. And so we were, we were discussing it. We were, I was telling Chris about the story, and I said, but babe, here's the deal. We are doing what God said, and we are teaching generations. And I refuse to leave this earth until not only my ch us, my children, my grandchildren, but my great-grandchildren are raised in that, knowing Without any doubt. And I said, if we could get a church full of people. Yeah. Yeah. Because you may be sitting here and, you, and you're thinking, well, I'm the oldest generation of my family that's coming here. Or you might be sitting here as a young teenager and thinking, well, gosh, my mom and them and my grandparents even come here. But here's the thing. I don't know how many people are here tonight, but if we can start this generational thing, do you know what's going to happen? Do you know the move of God that's going to come out of here? Because there's people that are going to literally have absolutely no doubt when they ask God for something. When I look around and I think about all the babies that are over in that, in that uh, children's church. That's why they're over there. That's why they're over there. They're getting it. They're being taught at an early age. See, Erin was saved at an early age. She was filled with the Spirit at six years old because she was in the atmosphere. She was the one who come to us and said, I need to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. She's been praying in tongues since she was six years old. She learned that in children's church. We are changing generations and if you will just not quit, yep. if you will just not quit, whatever level you're on, if you're the oldest generation or you're the youngest generation, don't quit. And we are going to bust these walls down and we are going to change this community. We're going to change this nation by people who are coming right out of this building. Amen? That's right. So it had to start somewhere. Yes. Like, I was not praying in the spirit at six. My mom wouldn't even take me to the barber shop at six years old. Right. She would make my uncle take me because I, I outcussed the old men. Right. I didn't grow up like some of you, and I didn't grow up like some of these kids are growing up over there. So I'm telling all the parents, you got kids over there. Don't think because they're four or five years old, they're not in tune with what God's doing. That's right. Because they're probably more in tune than half the people in this room. Yeah. They don't miss a trick. Aaron tells us one day about this guy that would stand in her room. I'm gonna gut someone. <laughs> I, I didn't. I went past talking. I went past calling the authorities. I went to. I know where to hide them. <laughs> I'm not even gonna make you an offer. I'm like, you're done, D done, right? I catch you. It's over. Like there is no discussion. You're in eternity. 
end of it. Done. So I'm like, man, we both are like, oh, you know, as any parents like, oh, my God. yeah, They're like, well, okay, what? She's like, we're like, is it scary? Like, what's going? On? You know, we're asking all these questions. Like, do they, uh, I'm thinking, how does somebody get in this house and I don't know it? You know. She goes, oh no. No, he stands over in the corner, and he watches me sleep. And I'm like, oh my god. I'm like. I mean, she just described him as a yeah. big, tall man who just stands yeah. there. And she's like, oh, no, he don't ever like bother me. me. He's watching me sleep. Well, duh, it was an angel. I'm like trying to figure out, you know, who I'm going to, well, I'm not going to kill no angel because they killed 186,000 people by themselves at one time. <laughs> Stand out of that fight, out. So she's little seeing those things. So it's like God's you're. God's speaking to her. When yeah, God's your speaking to her. My passed. grandmother died, and she just lived right up the hill from us. And I went to her one morning, I said, honey, I need, to, I need to talk to you. I need to tell you something. She goes, well, I already know what you're going to say. And I'm like, no, you don't. She goes, I already know what you're going to say. She said, the Lord came and told me. Mama already went to heaven. Mama went to heaven. I'm like, okay, so you didn't know what I was going to tell you. <laughs> Sometimes I'm slow to things, but when I pick up on it, I stick with it. You know what I mean? And so we're saying all of that, not, not to brag on our life at all, because there's nothing to brag about. It's just the importance of raising your children. It's the importance and starting of the generation. And starting it and sticking it out, man. Yes. Staying the course, not quitting, not backing up, not cowing down, going for it. Staying the course, staying the course. When the doors are open, you're here. Yes, yes. You don't make excuses. Don't yes. do the American average one time a month. Because you're going to miss things that you need to be putting in your toolbox yes. for the equipping so that when you're out there in the battle, in the fray, you've got the tools to use. Amen. Uh, let's put up Ephesians 1. There was anything else you wanted to add? You can hang out here. You make this all look better. Praise the Lord. Hey, I ain't. It don't bother me none. I know. Now, so in that, along the way, that I, I got to back up and say this. That's why when I tell you that when I see an empty chair, this is why I tell you this. When I see an empty chair, I see a place where someone who doesn't know Jesus ought to be. Okay? Years ago, a long time ago. I don't know. I've been preaching 20 years now. So it's probably 18, somewhere around that years ago. I had a conversation with a group of people. And it wasn't going well. And I said, listen. Listen. I've been called to reach people that you walk by. That you want nothing to do with. And I've learned in life, if you'll win the looked overs, you can't build enough buildings. Amen. So I, I'm not, I'm not too, I'm not taken aback at people at their sin lifestyle when they're not born again. Because they're only doing what they know. Give me enough time around them. They're going to know the difference. Number one, they're going to know there's a difference in me and you. If you're living right, Again, if you're not a church me and then a world me, if you're living right, they're going to know there's a difference automatic. Why? Because the spirit that's driving them knows the spirit that lives in you. And it's a major difference and it's a clash. And so that's why a lot of times people rear up and get mad. They're not mad at you. 
It's the spirit in them that's mad at the spirit in you, and so it manifests through that person. The devil needs people just like God needs people. The Holy Spirit works through people. Demon spirits work through people. And so many, so many times, people don't even realize they're being used. No. Either no, no. way. And that's the thing you have to that's the thing that you have to watch because you want to take it personal. And just like what Pastor Chris says, it's not it's not them, it's the spirit that's, that's driving right. them, going after the spirit that's driving you. And so you have to but be But we had to learn that. We had to learn that because we took it personal sometimes and and we had to learn it's not personal. It's spiritual. That's right. And if you're not willing to stand up against that, you're in trouble. You're yep. in trouble quick. Like, you're in trouble quick because that was the thing. Like, we, we had to make a decision. We have to stand. Like, if we don't stand now, we're not ever going to be able to stand. And so because as we went further in our walk, it seems like the hits were harder. As our daughter grew up, the hits were harder. And so if we didn't stand and make the stand when she was young, and even when we were young in Christ, yep. then we would I don't know that we would have been able to stand later. We, we wouldn't have made it. Because you just keep cowing down, you just get weaker and weaker. Yep. And you only get strong when you continue to stand right. and exercise those muscles, those spiritual muscles. Instead of taking it personal, you just take it to prayer. Yes. There have been a lot of times I've just went and stood and prayed in the spirit. Didn't know what to say, because anything I had to say was not good. So I just prayed in the prayer language. I just prayed, prayed until I felt ease, and I was done with it. Why? Because now I was back in my place of authority. One time we were when we lived in Amarillo, Aaron, we were driving down the street. Aaron was in the, car, in the truck with me. She said, Dad, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm fine. Why? She's like maybe 10. I said, yeah, I'm fine. Why? She goes, well, I've just noticed that here lately you've been praying in the Spirit a lot. I said, well, honey, you're right. I have been. We've got a lot going on, and we've got a lot of decisions to make, and I want to be sure that I make the right decision." She goes, okay. And then we went on talking about whatever we were talking about. So Ephesians 1, 1 through 8. I told you we were just going to crack the door. But I do believe that the stuff we've said tonight is something that you can take and use in your own life. So this letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus. I am writing to God's holy people. Listen, when you get born again, you change positions from unholy to holy, from unrighteous to righteous. You say, I don't know if I, I don't know if I believe that. It doesn't matter if you don't know if you believe it. That's what the Bible says. I mean, are we going to, like I'm not, we don't have a side book we believe in. Now we have a Bible, the Word of God that we stand on. Well, I know what the Bible says, but we believe this. Out. I'm out. I'm out of that. I'm out. I don't play ball that way. You understand? We don't have a Bible and then something else that we do because it feels better. I don't go that route. That's not how Christianity works. It is not how it works. Well, I'm okay with doing this, and I think God's okay with me living this way. No, he's not. Check your Bible. If you think he's okay with it, go read Galatians, and then you tell me, did, he, did Paul write the letter to the city of Galatia, or did he write it to the church? Go check it out, Galatians 5, and then you tell me if God's okay with it. Is that where you're at right now? No, man, it's good. Yeah, no, it's the truth. He's telling them, look, you live this way, you don't inherit the kingdom of God. You call that whatever you want. Take it up with Paul and Jesus. Leave me out of it. Well, the pastor said. Well, I'm just repeating what they said, okay? 
you listen. I'm I'm right. That's like four messages away, probably. I am writing to God's holy people in Ephesus who are faithful followers of Christ Jesus. You you think you think Marion's rough? Right. You. I mean, Ephesus was an armpit, man. This place was horrible. Yet there were faithful followers. He said, may God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Not grace like we know, saving grace, empowering grace. Okay. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has... Not may, not might, not going to someday, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Why? Because we are united with Christ. In other words, we're one now. You know, when you get married, you become one. That was the plan anyway. I'll save it. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. When you get born again, and God looks at you born again. He looks at you with no fault. Well, I don't know. Can you go back one verse? Let's read it again. Even before he made the world. Remember, Scripture says, I knew you before you were ever formed in your mother's womb. But even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ, in him, to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Remember we talk about you're justified. It's just like I'd never sinned. The day I got born again, it was just like to God I'd never sinned. Praise the Lord. Well, have you sinned since then? Yeah, that, sure. But guess what? He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. It doesn't mean I just go out and sin willfully. You can go a long time and not sin. I know that's not popular preaching because they want to give you a crutch to lean on where, you know, you sin, just go out and live like hell, do whatever you want. You know, God's okay with it. He's faithful. Praise the Lord. Shut your mouth. Yeah, lay, lay down at night and say a drunk prayer. I'm like, you're a... Ugh. I don't listen to that garbage. If I'm listening to somebody on TV preaching, and I do, and they start that, that's the last time. I'm done. Because now I know where their heart's at. And their heart ain't in it. I don't run with people like that because their heart's not in it. And I got to know people. Why do you think he's turned to what I was going to say? Because our hearts are the same. I got to know that the people I run with are committed to the death because it can come to that. And you got to know whose you are. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family. You know, if, you, if you're adopted, when you come into that family, you have every right now. Everything that family has is now yours. 
God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. Two more verses and, and then we'll stop. Not because I want to stop. But I know some of you are like, please stop. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom. Oh, man. Oh. He, oh. he purchased our freedom. We were all in bondage, headed for a devil's hell, and God purchased our freedom with the blood of his son. Oh. And forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. Oh. <laughs> he purchased our freedom. So yeah, that, I know I'm, you know, some people are like, man, Pastor, you might be a little tough for so-and-so. Well, so-and-so is going to have to grow a dadgum backbone for what's going to have to happen. Because I'm not lightening up the loads for so-and-so. Because I know the devil that's trying to kill him. And I know the authority that I have now and that they have now because they've been purchased with the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a game changer, man, when you get that in your heart and know it. Amen. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I just heard a preacher talking about this. This song. It's an old hymn. Who am I that a king would live and die for? Who am I? Yeah. That he would go. You know the rest of it? I don't know of all of it. The answer I may never know. Why he ever loved me so. <laughs> no rugged cross. He would go. Who am I? tell you who I am I'm a child of the most high God praise the Lord praise the Lord well you know preacher everybody's God's children no they're not oh no they're not you mean everybody's not God's child no no everybody's not God's child he created them, but they're not his children yet. Until they get born again, they are not in the same family I'm in. They're not. Stop it with all this crazy stuff. Watered down bunch of mess. I'll just quit. Come on, let's just praise God for a minute. Father, we praise your holy name. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Father God, that you gave your son for us so that we could be free so that we did not have to live in bondage anymore so father god we just praise your holy name tonight we thank you lord i thank you father god that i'm not who i used to be i thank you lord that you literally lifted me up out of that pit that you literally lifted me up out of that pit of bondage and so father god i just praise your name i just praise your name tonight thank you Lord I thank you Lord that I am free <laughs> thank you
thank you, Lord. Father, I just worship you. I just worship you, God. You are worthy, Father God, of my praise. Your praise will forever be on my lips. Thank you for not leaving me alone. Thank you for not making me try to figure it out on my own. Thank you, Lord, for putting me in a place with people around me that would help me, that would lift me up, and that would teach me and train me. And Father God, I'll spend every day of my life teaching and training people. Generation after generation, Father God. Day after day, we will take territory away from the enemy. I commit my life, Father God, to taking territory away from the enemy. Thank you, Father. We praise your name. Praise your holy name, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise your holy name. Take, sing that song right there. Uh, we sing praises to your name. I sing praises to your name. Just stand up and if you can and let's just lift our praises hands to Praises to your name. We praise oh, your name, Father God. Lord. Father, we love you, Lord. For your name is great and great. Christ 
I'm waiting on the Lord to do it. I'm, I'm believing for the Lord to do it. I hope the Lord does it. Have you checked the covenant we have? He's already done it. Well, you know, preacher, I'm waiting on God to heal me. No, he's already done it. He's already done it. He's already done it. Well, I don't feel healed. Well, okay, I don't feel saved on Monday mornings either, but I am. No, you're not waiting on God to do it. God's, listen, Jesus isn't coming back to go to the whipping post again. You understand? He's already done it. Jesus is not coming back and dying on the cross again so people can wait till he does it again so they can get born again. No, it's already been paid for. You're Listen to me. Everything you need from God is in his word. It's all been taken care of. It's up to you whether you're going to take it out of that word and have it in your life. It's not up to God. It is, it is not up to God. It is illegal for you to die sick. Illegal. Illegal. I'm trying to save this for two weeks. But I'm telling you, the Spirit of God won't leave me alone about it. It is illegal for you to be broke. It's illegal. Yeah, four or five hand claps. It's just like, well, you ought to see my checkbook. Do it God's way then. Do it God's way. If you don't know how, we'll tell you. Oh, that's it. Preach is all about money. I'll oh, shut up with your unbelief. And the devil that's talking to you. It has zero to do with that. And everything to do with people having everything God said they could have. Put up John 10:10 10, 10, and then followed up with John 10:11. I was going to read the whole bunch of it up to that, but you know. Yeah, I'll just read it all. Thank you. I tell you the truth. Anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After, Listen, if you're being pushed into situations, it's not God. A shepherd leads and a butcher drives. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. Oh boy. They won't follow a stranger. They won't follow a stranger. They'll run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant. So he explained it to them. I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers. But the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. Now, if you if, don't do this back there, I'm just saying this as a reference. Hang on to what you got there. If, if you go to Psalm 23, you see David laying out what a shepherd is all about. Oh, oh boy. It was a shepherd writing it. Getting it from the great shepherd. Yeah. Pinning 
what a shepherd is, what a shepherd does, how a shepherd lays his life down. They say they, uh, that in Israel you could always tell a good shepherd because his arms would have scars all over them from where predators would try to get the sheep and he would fight them off. Don't our shepherd? Yeah. Don't he have scars? Don't he have them all over his body? And then we want to, people want to sit around in church and then argue, with, well, we're going to vote and see if that's okay to talk about. Yeah, kiss Come my on. gospel grits. The thief's purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, but my purpose, the good shepherd said, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That's the purpose of God. And then he said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd sacrifices his life for the sheep. Remember what Jesus said? No man takes my life, but I lay it down myself. He was here on a mission to give his life for the entire human race. That's why we preach like we preach. That's why we send money all over the world and down the street. We, listen, it's not just send money out of here. This church gives exorbitantly to the kingdom work of Jesus Christ. Yeah, whether it be here at home or around the world. Because people matter. And you need to, I'm telling you, get it in your heart. If it, just like what Pastor Sue was saying. If every one of you Get it in your heart Come on. with such a burning desire that people matter and that our good shepherd died for them. It'll change how you think. You'll become consumed with the gospel. Amen. The good shepherd lays his life down for his sheep. I just want to know one more time. Doesn't our good shepherd have scars? Be healed now in the name of Jesus. Be healed. Don't wait on it. Don't look for it. Be that. Be that. I'm not waiting to feel like I'm born again. I am. I am. Sickness, listen. All this mess that's going on now, I'm like, I'll never have it. I'll never have it. I won't have the flu. I won't have the stomach bug. I won't, listen, they won't diagnose me with anything. Oh, you better watch it, preacher. No, you better watch it. And the devil better watch it. I'll never have any of that mess. Because that's what the Word of God says. The people come at you with that religious attitude. Well, you know, what? I'm like, just take your devil and go away. It's obvious you want him. Get out of my face. Because I read the covenant and what you're saying does not line up with what Jesus put them scars on his body for. Uh -huh. So you take the devil that's driving you and get out of my face unless you're going to change and say what the covenant says. Because if you're not, I am done talking. Done. We're not having a conversation. No more. It's over. Be healed. Be delivered from the devil that's trying to torment you. Yes. Amen. 
I just struggle with depression. Don't do it anymore. Be overflowed with joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Don't sit and watch all those stinking commercials are trying to pump pills in you. Come back. Do you feel the breath? Do you do that? No. No, I don't. I rebuke you, devil, and then I hit mute. Amen. I'm just, I'm telling you, folks, this, this Christianity, you're in a war. It's not a, it's not a, well, you know, I love the Lord and I'm just suffering. No. No. I love the Lord and I'm thriving. I, I'm living abundant. And I don't care who don't like it. It don't matter to me. It doesn't, makes no difference to me. Well, you shouldn't talk like that. You're a preacher. Oh, okay. No, I'm going to talk like that. I'll be talking like that at the supper table tonight if anybody wants to know. And I'll be talking like that at breakfast in the morning if Sue and I are having a conversation. Because this is our life. This is who we are. You want to know who we are away from here? You're looking at it. I don't have to yell at Sue. I don't even know why preachers yell. It just, I don't know. I just, there's so much passion coming out. Man, I'm like, you've got to get this. Like if there was a burning house, you're like, you know, I'm going to go in that house. I'd be like, don't do that. No. Oh, yeah, I'll be fine. No, you won't. Like I would do everything to try to keep you from going in there. And that's what we do as a church. We do everything we can to keep you from going to hell. We stand between you all the way just like Jesus stood between us all the way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that means I get in your face and get loud. You can get a CD and turn the volume down. <laughs> but if you're going to be here and you're going to call us your pastors, then I believe God's assigned you to sit here and to learn something and to get equipped to go out and fight in a real world where the devil's trying to kill you. He, listen, keep him under your feet. Right. Keep him under your feet. Well, you know, preacher, the devil's just attacking me. What, did you pick your foot up? Will you let him up? You let him up? Stop giving him credit. Put your foot back on his neck and get on with it. Don't, 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 don't let up. There, there can't be any let up in you. And you got to make up your mind. I'm telling you, I'm going to live for God. If I, had to go, I, if I had to close myself off from everybody that I used to know, I'm going to find me some new friends. I'm going to live for God. I don't care if they don't like it. I am done living on the other side of the ball. I'm going to live for God. Amen. Come on, let's give God a shout. Yay! <laughs> locker room of faith and I'm telling you you can go out and win this thing amen amen listen if you joined us online we love you God bless you we're so glad that you did I pray that your faith has been stirred just like our faith has been stirred here and we want you to know that we love you and God bless you amen listen Thank you for joining us here at Life in Christ Church. We are so glad that you tuned in, and we would love for you to join us here at any of our in-person services. 
For more information about us here at Life in Christ Church, check out our Facebook page or our website. We hope the rest of your day is blessed. And remember, it's not where you've been in life, only where you're going.